2002, Ethiopia. A group of scientists is working in the crater of one of the world's most dangerous volcanoes. They collect a 30 kilogram bag of household waste. They decide to simply throw it into the lava. What happens next shocks even the most experienced volcanologists. But what if we really started dumping all our trash into volcanoes? Is this a good idea or the beginning of a real disaster? Every year, humanity produces 2 billion tons of waste. That's equivalent to about 400 million elephants. Americans alone dispose of 254 million tons of waste annually. Landfills around the world are overflowing, oceans are polluted, and the problem is getting worse every year. Because of this, people have come up with increasingly crazy ideas. Launching the trash far into space? Too expensive, thousands of dollars per kilogram. Dumping it in ocean trenches? A similar attempt was already attempted in the 1970s, contaminating vast areas of the seabed with radiation. These dead zones, where nothing can survive, will remain for hundreds of years. Then, another idea emerged. What if we harnessed volcanoes? After all, they are like natural incinerators, capable of destroying everything without leaving a trace. To understand what happens when trash meets lava, we have to go back to 2002. Erta Ale Volcano in Ethiopia is one of the few volcanoes in the world with a permanent lava lake. This place is so harsh that the locals call it the gateway to hell. The air temperature here reaches 50 degrees Celsius, and a lake of molten lava boils in the crater at temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius. An international team of volcanologists from France, Italy, and the United States arrived to conduct research. The team included experienced scientists, including French volcanologist Pierre Violet and specialists from the French National Center for Research. Their goal was to install measuring devices. They took lava samples and studied the behavior of one of the world's most active lava lakes. After days of hard work under harsh conditions, the expedition collected a bag of household waste, plastic bottles, metal cans, leftover food, and rags, ordinary camping waste. In the African desert, where the nearest town is hundreds of kilometers away and camels are the only means of transportation, waste disposal was extremely difficult. Then one of the scientists suggested an obvious solution. Why not throw the garbage in the lava? Well, it seemed logical. Lava destroys everything in its path. The bag, weighing about 30 kilograms, was slowly lowered to the edge of the lava lake and thrown into the glowing mass. For the first few seconds, nothing happened. The bag slowly sank into the lava, like a stone in water. But as soon as it broke through the thin crust on the surface of a lava lake, something unexpected happened. A massive explosion shook the entire crater. Glowing lava spray shot several meters into the air, and the shockwave caused the scientists to panic and flee to a safe distance. The sound was so loud it could be heard up to a kilometer away from the crater. What happened? When the cold trash hit the molten lava, it immediately began to vaporize. The water from the organic waste turned to steam, and the plastic began to decompose, releasing toxic gases, hydrogen chloride, carbon monoxide, and other toxic compounds. All this led to a massive buildup of steam and gas beneath the dense lava crust. The pressure rose sharply, and when it reached a critical point, the gas exploded like a hot cauldron. The molten lava spewed out like a fountain to the height of a five-story building, and the shockwave knocked the scientists to the ground. They barely managed to roll away from the crater's edge and thus escape the deadly spray of molten rock. The experiment was immediately canceled, but the question remained, what would happen if we tried the same thing on a much larger scale? What would happen if we turned volcanoes into global waste incinerators? At first glance, volcanoes already seem like ideal waste incinerators. Lava temperatures reach 1,100 degrees Celsius, far hotter than any industrial furnace. Volcanoes operate around the clock, 
require no fuel, and seem capable of devouring any type of waste. But in reality, things are much more complicated. The first problem? There are very few of them. There are only about 1,500 potentially active volcanoes on the entire planet. Most of them are located in places that are completely inaccessible, in the middle of the ocean, in mountains, and in deserts, far from human settlements. This makes sense, because volcanoes pose a deadly threat to all living things. The second problem, not all volcanoes are suitable. Waste disposal requires so-called shield volcanoes with permanent lava lakes. These are slowly erupting volcanoes that don't explode but gradually spew lava. There are only a few of them on Earth. Most volcanoes are stratovolcanoes, known for their explosive eruptions. Approaching them with trucks full of garbage would be suicidal. The third problem? Logistics. Imagine transporting millions of tons of garbage to volcanic craters in some of the most inaccessible places on Earth. Thousands of trucks, camel caravans, and helicopters, all of this requires massive amounts of fuel. The carbon footprint of such transport would be far greater than burning the waste on site. The fourth problem, safety. Working on the rim of an active volcano is a constant death game. Toxic gases rising from the crater can kill within minutes. Lava spray can burn away any protective clothing and sudden changes in volcanic activity can catch workers by surprise. The fifth problem, the lava itself isn't as powerful as it looks. Yes, it melts most materials, but not all. Metals with high melting points will remain in the lava as impurities. Many chemical compounds don't completely decompose, but turn into toxic gases that rise into the atmosphere. Burning plastic releases dioxins, some of the most toxic substances on the planet. More importantly, if a 30 kilogram bag can cause such a powerful explosion, imagine what would happen to tons of trash. In Hawaii, Iceland, and Kamchatka, tourists regularly throw bottles and rocks into lava flows just to take cool photos for social media. On Mount Etna, tourists stand inches from the glowing lava ignoring authorities' requests to keep a distance of at least 500 meters. In Kamchatka, tourists grill sausages over the lava. Any foreign objects vaporize instantly, causing small explosions that send glowing spots dozens of meters away. And that's just one bottle or rock, not a bag full of mixed trash. Let's imagine for a moment a fictional scenario in which we decided to use volcanoes. Just as humans have seriously considered using space junk catapults or burying waste underwater, what would that look like? Huge convoys of trucks plowing through deserts and mountains to the few suitable volcanoes. Special roads built to the craters at the cost of billions of dollars. Protective suits for workers. Air purification systems. And automated waste dumps. Then constant eruptions. Air poisoning for hundreds of kilometers and acid rain from the emissions. Any change in volcanic activity would lead to a planetary catastrophe, a volcanic winter resulting from ash emissions, groundwater contamination, and the destruction of ecosystems. No, we certainly shouldn't turn volcanoes into garbage dumps, just as we shouldn't turn the ocean into a radioactive waste dump. What humanity actively did in the 20th century Fortunately, modern civilization has more logical and effective solutions to the waste problem. Today, developed countries are actively using next-generation waste incineration plants. These are not just furnaces, but high-tech facilities equipped with multi-stage filtration systems. They not only destroy waste at 850 degrees Celsius, but also generate heat and electricity. In Sweden, these plants power entire cities, and their emissions are so clean that they meet the most stringent environmental standards. At the same time, waste separation and recycling are evolving. Modern sorting systems use robotic arms and artificial intelligence that can separate plastic from metal and paper from glass with an accuracy of up to 95%. In Germany, 66% of all household waste is recycled this way. In South Korea, the figure is as high as 
biotechnology promises to revolutionize waste management. Scientists have already succeeded in cultivating bacteria capable of eating plastic and converting it into harmless compounds. A Japanese company has isolated bacteria that completely degrade polyethylene terephthalate PET, plastic within a few weeks. Meanwhile, biodegradable materials are being developed, packaging made from algae, starch, and fungi that disappear naturally within a few months. An interesting economic approach is being used in Asia, the pay-for-waste system. Citizens pay garbage collection fees proportional to the quantity and type of waste. The more unsorted waste, the higher the fee. This provides a strong incentive for people to separate their waste and reduce its disposal. As a result, the amount of household waste in South Korea has decreased by 30% in 10 years. One promising technology is plasma gasification, a process in which waste decomposes in plasma at temperatures exceeding 3000 degrees Celsius. This produces a synthetic gas. It can be used as fuel and produces virtually no toxic emissions. This technology is still expensive, but it is actively being developed in Japan and Europe. All of these methods are already in use and have proven effective. They are safe, economically viable, and do not require converting volcanoes into industrial sites. Volcanoes are not natural incinerators. They are complex, unpredictable, and extremely dangerous geological systems that are best left alone. The 2002 Ethiopian experience clearly demonstrated that even 30 kilograms of ordinary garbage can trigger a massive lava lake explosion. Millions of tons of garbage will turn volcanoes into veritable time bombs that threaten the entire planet. Science does not tolerate simple solutions to complex problems. Humanity has already found safer, more effective, and cleaner ways to deal with waste. The best way to dispose of waste is through recycling, energy recovery, and reducing consumption, not trying to let nature do the dirty work for us. Let's leave volcanoes as they are, one of nature's most amazing and terrifying phenomena. And we've learned to dispose of waste in a more civilized manner.